here. I'm going to hit record. All right. So today um, I have Joe joining us. Um, as a lot of you know, I'm Rachel. Um, I decided to do this fun series of 21 days of holiday hopes and dreams just with everything going on. Um, and when I first decided to do this, I asked people what um, they wanted to hear about, what would be helpful for them as as we all conquer the season, um, the season of a lot of different things, changes, isolation, um, loss of jobs, you know, just big events that are going on in our life. And someone had request how, um, how do you cope with some big life events that occur during this time? So whether that is birth or whether that's a loss of a, of a loved one or whether that's a wedding or, you know, there's all these different things that in our life are huge milestones and we're not be able to celebrate it with other people in our life. And even simply, a, a, not simply, but a birthday. I was just talking to my husband about that the other day. He was like, well, this birthday was very different this year. <laughs> um, so I think we're all trying to navigate that. And um, I, I uh, reached out to Jo. Um, I've been following Jo and her story and her family. Um, and uh, just one thing that I have read or like on Facebook, you know, you, you find that you like get to know people through Facebook in some way, shape or form. But, um, and then I, I had the honor of meeting her through her husband about three or four weeks ago on over Zoom. Um, but there was just something about Joe that really has spoken to me and I've found a lot of strength in her and her story. And so I reached out to her and asked her if she'd be willing to share what it's like to go through this last year of having some of her big events in her life and how she's been able to cope. So thank you so much for joining. Um, I know it's hard sometimes to, to share stories live. <laughs> So I was like, you're already starting to make me cry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, actually, I'm not sorry. It's okay to cry. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've cried live. <laughs> well, that's good. You're in good company because I'm a crier. So. <laughs> oh, me too. Ryan always makes fun of me because I cry like at commercials and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, especially during but, the holidays. I'm always just, just a big sap. <laughs> right, right, exactly. But thank you so much for joining. Um, I know you and I were talking a little bit about this, but, um, you know, I think sometimes it's hard to um, be able or to go through some of this and feel like we're so isolated and alone. Um, and I, I guess um, I, maybe it would be helpful just to ask you to share your story a little bit or um, what, what big events were going on. And of course you, you know, feel free to share whatever you feel comfortable with. This doesn't have to be like a big life divulging thing, but sure. um, so I'll just open it up to you. Yeah. Um, well, so 2020, <laughs> the year that has been so difficult, I think for all of us, um, definitely been one of the most challenging years of my life, but I say that, um, with the perspective that actually the last four years have been kind of a difficult season for me. Um, started out four years ago, my sister really got sick. She had undiagnosed colon cancer. At the same time, I was going through a very painful divorce um, and had, you know, a little five month old at the time. So it was just like a lot of stuff hit me all at once during that season. Um, and then fast forward a couple years, I meet my now husband, Matthew, who's just been such a rock and a solid, like, just a solid person that has just been such a blessing to me. Um, and we're married now. And, you know, the first year of marriage, my sister passes away. And it's just like, okay, that's hard, but we'll get through it, you know. Um, and then 2020 hits. And we start out the year, you know, talking about, are we gonna, are we gonna have a baby? Like we, you know, it's kind of been on our mind. Um, and then we find out we're pregnant. And we're like, excited but also like okay like we were planning for this but we weren't expecting it to happen so soon so okay and then literally that same month I, f I get fired from my job <laughs> and then go on um you know obviously the job search which is tough and it's tough when you're also pregnant at the same time so that was very challenging um but I ended up finding great sorry that's my <laughs> It's my phone connected to my computer. That's okay. <laughs> um, but I ended up finding a um, really awesome job with a great company. Um, they're very supportive and they've been just phenomenal throughout the whole COVID 
crisis this year. I mean, they really truly care about their employees and they've been so supportive to parents. So that's been great. So then come, I believe it was May, we, we were, you know, of course, excited to find out the sex of our baby and had the first ultrasound and we were just really pumped. We found out we were having a boy. Um, and so, of course, we're just like letting the whole world know we're having a little boy. We're so excited. Yay, yay, yay. Well, that same night, we get a call from our midwife and she's like, I don't even know how to like put this, but you know, your baby is showing signs of a chromosomal disorder that they think might be either trisomy 18 or trisomy 13. And I didn't even know what trisomy was. And so, you know, of course, you know, you Google everything and try to find out about this condition. And we were just completely in shock. Um, I've only had normal, healthy pregnancies. I've never even had a miscarriage before that point. And so it just was a whole nother aspect of motherhood that I had never been through. So of course you walk through the normal emotions of devastation. Um, so trisomy 18, just to give you a picture. So trisomy 21 is what Down syndrome is. Um, trisomy 18, it, it means that he, the, there's a third chromosome, third 18 chromosome that is attached to, you know, either it's partial trisomy 18, which means it's only some chromosomes are affected or full trisomy 18, which means all chromosomes are affected. So our baby had full trisomy 18. Um, and with that, um, there's a spectrum, you know, some, some babies only have certain things affect them. Um, other babies, like our baby had, um, his heart was a really, um, basically the way the cardiologist described it, his heart at the very beginning when it was formed just didn't form correctly. And so he had multiple, multiple issues with his heart and so as parents, we were just like, how do we navigate this? How do we even, like, what, what do you do? You know, it's just so, so, so crazy and devastating. But we decided to um, continue in the pregnancy um, and carry him to full term and just fully knowing that at any point he could pass away, um, he could be born still. Um, just unimaginable things <laughs> that no parent should ever have to go through. Um, sorry. Okay. So <clears throat> that alone is tough, but how do you navigate that in COVID? <laughs> and so we really, given, given the amount of um, issues with his heart, we really felt that we wanted to create an environment for him where he just knew love the entire time. And so um, we chose to have a home birth, which is how I had my last baby as well, and um, had an amazing team surrounding us who were just so supportive. Um, had our pastor come after, quickly after he was born, um, and he only lived about 10 minutes, but we were able to meet him alive, which was such a gift. Um, and, you know, if there's any silver lining to any of it, it's just that we had those moments. So, so yeah, I promised you I was a crier. <laughs> and it's still very fresh. It, it's only been a couple months since um, he was born and passed away. So um, we're still navigating through all of that. But we've had just so much, so much love, out, like, just shown to us. And it has been so en encouraging and phenomenal to see the ways that people have just been so generous and kind. So I, th I feel like so many people have been with us on the journey because we've been so <laughs> open about it on social media and just have written about it and, you know, let people in to be a part of the journey with us. And so that's been um, healing in, in and of itself as well. So. So yeah, that's kind of the journey <laughs> in a nutshell of what we've been on um, this past year. It's just been quite the roller coaster, um, but it it's, you know, not without its beauty too. And I think that's been the, the way that we've, at least I have been able to kind of cope is to kind of see through the beautiful parts of it as well. So, so yeah.
Well, <laughs> I appreciate you sharing that because I, I, um, I can't even imagine as a mom, you know, like, like you were saying that that's nothing that you would want to wish on anyone. And I like, I can't even, it's not fathomable, fathomable for like what you're experiencing, just like having my children and knowing what that's like. And, um, you know, I think part of what you were sharing with like opening this up and being really open and honest and sharing it on Facebook. And, and from that, you were able to get this really strong support system because you were being open about it. I think that's what drove me to asking you if you would be willing to share this. I had no idea if you would be willing to share because I knew it was so fresh um, and such a hard topic. And not only do I feel like you have so much strength to share the story, but there's so many women that are sitting in this, in this, and men that are sitting in the sadness and, and shame and of that loss or whatever feelings that they're having and are having a hard time opening that up and sharing that publicly or with other people that they love and care about. And yet that can be such a healing thing in itself because no one knows to help out if you don't share that you need help or support. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's been the biggest thing for me at least is just you know, regardless of whatever loss that I've walked through is letting people in and, and say like, this is what it is. It's not, it's not easy, but, um, but here's where I'm at. And some people can't handle that and that's okay. And other people can, and they give you that space to be and, and to, you know, and that's, I think where I've come to realize who your true, your true friends are too in, in the midst of that. But, um, I'd, I'd say overall, we feel, we have felt, especially I have felt super supported um, by people in my community and from my church. And I mean, it's just been, it's been awesome. So in that way. <laughs> well, and I, you know, just, I appreciate your strength of coming on here and, and sharing your story because it's not an easy one to share. Um, and, you know, I think it's hard, really hard to find those, that silver lining, you know, like, um, because a lot of times I think there's that piece of, um, like, it, it feels like we're negating all of the hard part of it when we try to find some silver lining, but like what I, I didn't hear you doing that. I heard you like, like both of these things are true. I can look at the silver lining to help me cope and get through this really challenging time. And I'm going to like acknowledge a hundred percent that this still is a struggle and I'm still going through this and we're still going through this and we still need that support. And that love and that care um, and we're trying to make the best of of a really difficult situation yeah um, absolutely with, yeah with with being like in the era of COVID and not being able to see people like on that physical level what what have been some helpful ways to kind of navigate these these big things in your life man um, that's that's I mean that's a really good one and I think people people often don't know what to do um, anyway, given us a hard circumstance. Um, but I think for us especially has just been being, you know, letting our community in and love us, letting our church know how to support us, how to pray for us, how to, um, you know, being people brought us like gifts and they brought us like meals and they just, they, ha they found practical ways to love us. Um, I had one, I mean, we had like meals set for a whole entire month, which was honestly super awesome because that's the last thing I wanted to think about was, you know, um, but I think also too, people have been very kind to honor our son's life, our son Luke's life, um, you know, sending cards. Um, some people made like plaques for him and like, you know, just very sweet, thoughtful gifts that, you know, I'm sure as the the giver of the gift, there's a little bit of like trepidation of like, are this going to be received well? But it was very meaningful for, for us to have people honor his life with us, um, you know, to, to see that we valued who he was and who he is and um, kind of go through, through that. Um, sorry, I'm looking at my notes too, because I wrote stuff. <laughs> sure. I'm, I'm a note taker too. Look, I have my notes right here. <laughs> Um, and I think like with that, you know, just being allowed to have the space to grieve and the space to just be, it has been huge for me or, you know, I, I've been through a lot of loss and obviously I've gone to counseling, I've done the stuff that I needed to do to, to prepare. And that was a big thing with, with Luke as well. 
I knew that I was going to need that support. And so I reached out to a, a counselor right away once I knew the diagnosis. But I would say the thing that was so huge for me was being able to talk to other women who had been through it. Trisomy diagnosis is, is unlike any other diagnosis because you're kind of living in these two worlds. You're not, you're not in the miscarriage world, even though like, you know, that's a really, really painful thing to go through. Um, but you're, on, you're not also really in the stillbirth group, although sometimes trisomy babies do end up being there. Um, you're in this in-between for such a long time. Um, we knew about his diagnosis at 20 weeks and I carried him to 38 weeks. And so we had 18 weeks, um, if I'm doing the math correct, but we had 18 weeks where um, we, were, we were grieving, but we were also trying to enjoy the time that we had with him, um, especially you know, being pregnant. It's, like a, it's a weird paradox. And so being able to talk to other women who had specifically gone through this type of thing was huge for me. And these women, they're incredible. They really are. Um, just really brave women. Oh. <clears throat> who were courageous enough to share their story with me. Um, and I feel like from that, I don't know if this is true about all loss, but when you have a shared collective loss, there's something that binds you together that makes that isolation feel a little bit less. Um, and just their kindness to reach out to me, to support me through it. There's obviously support groups on Facebook that you, know, you can be a part of, but you know, being able to meet up with some of these women and socially distance and all of that too is huge as well. Um, I just wanted to give them hugs and be like, thank you for just <laughs> sharing your journey too, because it's just really tough. And I would say that that's, that's one of the trickiest things about COVID, but I would say like, man, try to get into a community or a place where you feel like you can talk to people um, and be intentional about it. Um, we're experiencing things like we've never experienced before and it is so very isolating i even just this week i'm like it's very quiet around here you know there's it's thanksgiving season we, it looks different than other years but um i mean just finding a place finding some way even if it means you know zoom calls or just being able to connect with people who have a similar story joining a support group, maybe that, maybe it's silly, but joining a COVID support group, maybe that's a thing we can start, but just, you know, <laughs> feeling, feeling connected. <laughs> so yeah, long-winded answer, I guess, but. No, I yeah. think, I think that is a great answer. Um, I think sometimes the hardest thing is that we get really stuck on, the only way I can get support is to see someone in person. And when we get stuck on that, we miss all these other opportunities to reach out in different ways and finding a, a community that really understands it. I mean, like, like, you know, when you're, when you're like, even if you're talking to me, I have no idea what you're, what you experienced. You know, I have no idea the last, I can only imagine just from having children, what that would maybe be like, but that's not even close to what you experienced because I can never understand it from your love, like from your perspective, how it felt to you. And so I think it's really important to have other people that can really understand it from where you're at. Right. And, um, that might be like having to search for a support group that has that specific diagnosis or that specific experience. Um, plus being able to be a part of other, other ways to look at it can be helpful too. Um, but I think that's really great great information of like be specific and I, um, I can't remember what word you said but like just like do it on purpose like find or like be purposeful of what support you're looking for um, and I even talk to people about that too like there are so many support groups out there but sometimes it's not the right fit right so if you get into a support group and it's more of like complaining or you know like so I mean and that can be helpful in some ways but sometimes that can also turn out very toxic and so it's yeah. finding the right the right support group and, and venturing towards like what is going to be helpful for you. Right. Absolutely. Like, yeah. yeah. So I, I think that's say, great. It would definitely say like, just even, you know, having that emotional awareness of like, okay. I mean, I think there's certain things that you can notice. Like for me, it's very obvious. <laughs> I get panic attacks and I get 
like my body physically sh shows me a response that says, hey, you're not doing okay right now and you need support. Um, and I think that sometimes is difficult, especially if you're like navigating depression or you're navigating um, feeling blue or isolated because it is such a debilitating type of place to, to be able to say, okay, what am I feeling right now in this moment and what do I need to resolve it and having that awareness. Um, and I mean, there's, there's just definitely practical things that I've learned along the way that I'm like, okay, in this moment, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I need. I need to step back or I need to um, take a bath and like decompress or I need to reach out to somebody and talk to them or I need to read a book or I need to get off a screen or I need to, you know, whatever it may be. Um, I know movement, like just even dancing or allowing myself. And, and I think this is something that has been really, really valuable to me in, in the stages of grief, but allowing myself to feel joy in the midst of those painful moments has been really huge. Like not being afraid to laugh at a memory or, you know, I mean, there's moments even throughout labor where, I was laughing with my midwives and that was just such a gift to me to be able to have these, these little pockets. I was laughing with Matthew and we were, you know, the, there's just so many, so many points of just memories that I'm like, I'm so glad that we laughed. I'm so glad that we took the time to find joy in the midst of the hard part of what we were going through. Um, and I think that's especially true around the holidays, you know, and, around the COVID holidays, just finding those moments where you can say, I'm gonna step back from this situation, this thing sucks, this, this circumstance sucks, but how can I find joy in the midst of it? And how can I you know, find ways to just be okay and be thankful and, and change my perspective in a way that is not so focused on the really hard thing that I'm going through. And that's, that's really tough. It's really tough to do that. Um, it takes practice and it takes intentionality and it takes knowing, like I said, when you need to reach out and when you need help to kind of find ways to cope and, and walk through that. But um, those, those moments for me where I'm like, okay, it's okay to be, it's okay to be not okay. And it's okay to laugh. And, and there's no right or wrong way to grieve. There's no right or wrong way to navigate COVID. It's just, it is what it is right now. But um, I think finding the new, the new way to be helps in a lot of ways. So. Learning how to find those things and like navigate it in a different way, but still, still search for it, still like get those supports around you. Even if it's calling them to say like, I just need you to talk through this with me. I know you can't be here right now, but I just need you to talk with me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else that you feel like would be really helpful for people like even or even just like friends or family members of individuals that are going through big events, um, like things that were helpful. I know you shared a little bit of things that were helpful, things that weren't helpful. <laughs> that, I mean, we don't want to like point everyone, anyone out, but like sometimes it, it helps just to be like, hey, this isn't helpful. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. I And I really love how many people reached out to us and just, you know, said, Hey, we're praying for you. Please let me know how I can help you and all that. I think a lot of times I was like, I don't even know how you can help me. Like, I don't even know how I can help myself right now. And like thinking about like ways to be like, this is how you can help me. was kind of like, I was like, I don't know how to do this. So I think I really appreciated people who were just like, I'm just going to show up anyway. And maybe that's just my personality and other people are like, I know I'm not, I'm not a native Minnesotan, so I know that we can be very standoff. <laughs> um, and I'm from Texas where you're just like, you know, we're going to, anyway, so. Rock, um, walk right into the door and here you go. <laughs> yeah, I think, people, I think there's such a good balance of people respecting our space, but also being like, I'm just going to love on you anyway. Here's a way that I can love on you. And um, it just was really, yeah. So I think that's probably, it. I mean, being able to, hear people say hey i'm thinking of you i'm i'm praying for you i'm i'm here for you if you need anything if you just want to talk if you just want to be um i have some friends that i can talk to but you know obviously i'm not going to talk to everybody in the same way that i would talk to certain friends but um i didn't think that was that was just really huge for us but also just you know knowing that there are practical ways that you can support people um whether that be like 
in, being intentional about saying, you know, in the, in the weeks and months later after the big event happens, still touching base with them and saying, hey, just checking in, how are you doing? Like, you know, I know it's been a couple months and, you know, the big event is over or the big tragedy or whatever is, is done, but are you okay now? Like, you know, or do you need support still? I think is a huge one. Um, and I think commemorating too, just the loss and um, being able to honor that person with them and, and hold them up in, in that it's like it's like they're kind of like holding you up and for for a season and then you know less time or time goes on they they don't need to hold you up as much but you know sometimes you still do need that support later on but I don't know if that answers everything that yeah. I, I would just say like yeah you know let people know you, you care and that you're there for them and that you see them I think that's been the hugest like the, the biggest things that we've been seen our child has been seen he's been loved and he's been known and and so have we so that's that's helped for sure. Yeah, no, that definitely answers it. And I think it can be applied in a lot of different ways, right? Like um, for individuals that, um, they, that they're trying to figure out how to navigate a toddler and a baby and trying to figure out how to do that without people being able to come home and, or to like help them, you know, in the past when someone gave birth, they would have like family members come and watch the kid while they get a nap. <laughs> like yeah. even just checking in on, on that mom or dad or, um, checking in on the couple that just got married, you know, like checking in a couple months after, how are you guys doing? How are you holding up? You know, cause it's different. Well, navigating, like living together and stuff is different once <laughs> in this world. Valid point. Like, you know, I, it's in the perspective of good things too. Like big life events are not always bad things. Sometimes they're really good things and it is a transition and people do, I think, I think maybe we're more aware of this this year, but I think we're all aware now of like, okay, we're all in this together. We all have our crap that we're going through, be it good or bad. We all have our stuff. And just because my story has been so traumatic and, and big doesn't mean that somebody else's story isn't as valid just because it's been a good thing. And so I think just knowing that we all need support and we all need help and to be in this together to to come together and support each other is huge it's it's really i think how we're gonna get through it <laughs> right well and i loved how you were talking about like just having someone say like hey i'm gonna do this for you like that's actually been a lot of the feedback that i've gotten because i've i've talked or i've talked to talking talking i talked to a, a few um, individuals that have had kids and they're like you know like it's this is tough and just yeah. sending a meal to them without even asking, like, what do you want? I mean, I'll, I'll say, what do you want? Or like, when, when would you like this delivered to you? Right. But not even asking because that's, that's oftentimes the feedback I get. Like, I don't know what I need at this moment, Rachel. And I remember that too. Like with my kid, I, I had no idea what I needed at that moment. I knew I wasn't good. <laughs> but I, I didn't know what I needed. And so I, yeah, I think that's great advice of like, send wine. just always send wine. <laughs> send, send the wine. <laughs> yes. So even like even a 25 or a $20 gift card to Starbucks, like that was my way of getting out of the house and grabbing a Starbucks. Like something like that is, is a way to be, feel seen. Like you were saying, like, so I think those, I, I think that's a great idea of like, not just asking what someone needs, but just providing them something. And people can always say no. That's the thing. Like, people can always say no. Absolutely. And I don't think anybody has ever like, no, thank you. Don't, don't give me Starbucks. Like <laughs> no, I don't need any more coffee. No, we all right. need coffee. <laughs> Unless you're weird. <laughs> weird people well. drink coffee. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> but yeah, very true. Very, very true. Yeah. Well, I appreciate like all of the information that you've provided and, you know, I think this can help individuals in so many different ways, whether it's loss, whether it's a positive event in their life and just being able to find the silver lining in, in such a difficult place, but also to honor those feelings that, that you're having. Um, I think as loved ones or people that want to care on or love on, it's helpful to have some ideas too of how to help others that might be going through a difficult time because we're all in different areas of our life during this this period too so um, I think that was really important piece that you just pointed out there on that aspect so um, I just really 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 appreciate you you sharing that story you were talking about the strength that you found in those other women and honestly there's that strength in you of you telling your story and um, I just know that that you have inspired other people so I really do appreciate you jumping on 
Well, thank you. I'm really honored to share and just be a part of this too. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, I'm gonna get off live here.